Sunday papers on Off the Ball. You're very welcome along. Um, it's Johnny Ward in studio, Shane Keegan's on Skype, and Nilo Tool has come in. Forget about Ken Barlow. This is a man that does not look his age at all. How are you? Yeah, well, huh? they, as I say, you can't fatten a tour bed, Johnny. Um, those who know row. Yes, yeah. yeah. There you go, the ultimate, uh, yeah. Rowing is the ultimate fitness uh, it, it, for people. Yeah, yeah. So. I I have to say, when I was in the gym, I absolutely hated the row machine. Does. Hated it. Now, obviously, I didn't I didn't get out in a bow. So, like, I when I was on the bike in the gym, I didn't like that, and I much prefer being out the bike now in yeah. the open air. But if if one were to hate the row machine, in the gym would he or she actually like the the cla- Well, the funny thing is, like rowing, it's like you are working eighty seven percent of the muscles in your body. So wow, yeah. So it's uh, you're also working power and endurance at the t- same time. So it's. It's that kind of the whole thing, you know. The whole thing. It's a bit technical. Once you get the technique down, it is a brilliant workout. And it's very time effective. So people who are really kind of maybe lazy and I've only got twenty minutes or half an hour, jump on the rower, you get the full, full workout. Yeah, it's great. What, what, we do we do we do well. The business is going about three years now, Johnny, and uh, you're just straight your, away you're plugging your business. Yeah, well there you go. Where did you see that? In. Excuse me. Where's the <laughs> camera? One, Where's one the camera? Shane Keegan, <laughs> Shane Keegan will be plugging his uh, plug it there away, Shane. <laughs> your, your coaching business. Um, Johnny, when when you say when you say when I was in the gym does is that to lead us to believe you are no longer an attendee of the gym is that, it? that is correct Shane that is correct <laughs> COVID happened have you, have you ever been in a gym Johnny uh, I, there's actually a fantastic oh. gym near that was near, a, oh, no. near me in Herberton um, the gym is interesting because um, some people get to love it I, I never I wouldn't say I ever loved it but I did enjoy the sense of kind of leaving it well <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's not what I was going to no, say. I'm I did joking. enjoy the sense of um, it, it. It gives you a sense of higher self-esteem if you if you look better than you did before you went in. Yeah, basically. Now there were a lot of people in there that were like, I mean, they were there to be seen. You know, this sounds like a long time ago. When was the, this? You were calling it. This it was, maybe it was a couple of years ago or it was a long time ago. Okay, it was a few. Well, years you look ago. very fit, Johnny. I don't. I don't. I, I, well, like I, 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 cycle, time. I cycle away now, but um, the gym, like, could you're you're looking at yourself in the mirror, and y- the other thing is, it's quite a solitary thing at times. You don't really know anyone there. You know. Yeah, it is. It is. And gyms nowadays, they they can be kind of just for that Instagram generation. You see a lot of mm. people taking pictures and stuff like that. So, yeah, it's kind of, gyms can be very intim- in, in, very intimidating for some people. Yeah. So, yeah. what is your business now? So it's an indoor rowing uh, class, like spin, but much indoor rowing class. Yeah, that's literally my idea of Guantanamo Bay. Well, yeah. No, we, well, it's it's we have people night. No, we have people. Like 76 have just got their knees replaced and we have kind of jocks. So we've got that big range of people. So it's uh, it's very inclusive, very inclusive. And it's, it's pretty much a pretty short workout. Uh, again, uh, full full body workout. It's like spin, but a level above spin, really. I'm actually tempted to do it. I, you have a free invite. Brilliant. Shane, go. That, that's... Um, Shane, you, you as well. Although, you, again... Oh, no, no, I just want to know how Johnny gets on. Now. You let me know how Johnny, how Johnny I'll take fared. Some bit. I'll take some bit. I'll take some Shane, bit. I wasn't... I was, honestly, God, I wasn't that bad in the gym in general. The rowing machine, I was pathetically bad at. I was so bad. But, like, if you're saying all these muscles and whatever... Yeah, th- let's give get, it a go. Give it a go. Your Instagram account is... Crew Class Dublin, by the way, Instagram games. Yeah, enough, enough. Yeah, okay, stop. Okay, oh, enough, 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 enough. Um, Shane, we're going to have to talk about hurling at some point, unfortunately. So do do uh, stay with us over the next uh, hour and a bit. We're going to chat um, about what happened in Crow Park. Cats have the last laugh. Um, that's a fairly self-explanatory headline. Cat laughs, um, and there are three very happy Kenny players. Kenny left red face by Menos Armenia. We only have ourselves to blame, says Irish boss. That is the front of the Sunday Indo. Um, the back is Eamon Sweeney about Lester Piggott, which we will talk about. Um, the death of the great Lester Piggott during the week. Um, we don't have that many papers to show you. What with the Sunday paper lineup in Ireland, generally being quite small, but this is the Times, the upper hand, um, which is definitely what they had. That's a play on the handshake. Um, Kilkenny and Cody prevail over Sheffern's Galway in a war of wills which is kind of what it was Kenny we will stick to new style despite loss and then the back page we have uh, David Walsh saying that Ron O'Gara could sort out the Northern Ireland protocol I'm not sure he's all that bothered about that but David Walsh talks about the idea of Saudi cash and you will have heard uh, Adrian Barry on Friday morning here talking about Graham McDowell and his uh, poor Graham had to look after his family to take uh, all that money from Saudi Arabia. Um, yeah. Anyway, 
Yeah, we'll get to that. And this is the uh, the Mail Horror Show. Now, a- anyone who's followed uh, Philip Quinn in the Mail will know that he's been quite critical of Stephen Kenny at times. Um, it's a horror show. And then Philip says, no defence for Kenny as Armenia exposed Irish limitations. Shane, only one place to start, and that's Yerevan. Yeah, it was a tough watch, Johnny, wasn't it? Um, yeah, look, it, it, I'll be honest with you, I, there was kind of, would have been alarm bells for me heading into this game. It wasn't one that I was overly looking forward to or overly confident that they would do well in um, due to a combination of factors, I suppose. One, uh, the heat, you know, like yourself, you'd be talking to a few kind of, journals who kind of think uh, who are out there and experience those kind of things us as people who are just watching on TV it's not something that comes to mind to us very very quickly but a couple of them had said to me during the week um, this is going to be really really warm this is going to be very 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 warm um, that was certainly a factor the whole end of season thing and lads kind of coming to the end of a long grueling season and how how where the heads and the bodies were um, was a little bit of an alarm bell for me as well and then Armenia's style of play and the fact that we have historically not been very good, not just under Stephen Kenny for as long as I can remember, um, we're not very good, really, are we? Again, playing against teams that that drop deep and and want to play on the counter-attack against us. Um, You know, you combine all of those things together and the other thing I throw in, Johnny, is... (laughs) And I know I sound like I'm immediately making excuses and and we'll go through the pieces and, and, and that, but... They're not as Armenia are not gen, genuinely Armenia are not as bad as I think we were making out. They're really not as bad as I think we were making out. I think people heard the the recent Norway scoreline and went nine nil. Oh, lovely walk in the park here. We're gonna we're gonna we're, we're gonna bang in goals. But I mean, they topped their last nation league nations league group: Estonia, Georgia, North Macedonia teams that we wouldn't exactly you know find it to be a walk in the park against if we're quite honest about it and they started their World Cup qualifying campaign brilliantly like after three games of the World Cup qualifying campaign they were top of a group that included Germany um, can, can I just thank be- you for that Shane to provide a little bit of context to the extent that if we do have a headline to suggest horror show horror show it was a horror show in the sense we lost 1-0 to a team that aren't that bad in horrific heat they'd basically one shot on goal nearly in the whole game on targets we lost 1-0 the players were struggling at the end of a long season is it a horror show Shane or is it a game that actually was more of a banana skin than people thought it would be yeah, I think it was. And look, I'm given. I am getting the excuses in early, and I'm given the the. I suppose the side to try and 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 soften some of the criticism first before potentially. Arthur has just called me an apologist, Sarah. Can I just throw that in? I'm not an apologist. I don't think it was a horror show. Sorry, Shane. <laughs> um, yeah. Look, as I say, it is. I, I never thought it was going to be a walk in the park. I mean, you've said they've had one shot. Um, you know, again, people will say opinion, opinion. And again, you know, some some people will call XG opinion as well, but it's not. It is actually based on a model that has, has followed hundreds of thousands of games, and that's how they set it up. And, I mean, the XG in this game was, was 1.2 for Ireland and 0.56 for Armenia. Um, so that, again, certainly suggests that it's not a game that in normal circumstances, you usually find yourself losing. Um, and then, all that aside, we weren't great, were we? No. We really... We, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> I was waiting, but I, After I was, all of that, I was going we to have to do the whole... Yeah, Niall, what was the reaction in. like in the papers? Well, I think it was... <laughs> I yeah. think it was... No, I, like, I saw the game, it's like it's, it wasn't a great game. Clearly wasn't a great game, and we're just not at the races. And it's just I don't know where we go from there, but it's no, it just wasn't a game. Game, great game. I was watching. I was actually at the Leinster game yesterday, so I didn't see uh, didn't see a hell of a lot. But but again, yeah, I think we're we're well behind the eight ball in in, in terms of soccer. Yeah, that's Sh- right. What about the papers' reaction, Shane? Yeah, you've kind of touched on it Jack. there already. Mm-hmm. I think there's a couple of um, kind of different. I think Dan Bin Dan Dan McDonald comes at it. Um, he absolutely isn't an, an apologist <laughs> for Stephen. Um, he does say that this was a, a poor performance, a very, very poor performance, and one where we can have very few can have very few few excuses. Um, and he goes through it quite well. He touches on, makes a very good point about the, the the second water break and how the Irish players were were kind of 
sprinting across to try and get some water on board during the second water break, whereas uh, the Armenians didn't even really need water at all. And I do I do think that fed into it to a certain extent. Um, so Dan is, yeah, Dan is, is reasonably measured on it while saying it was a poor performance and unacceptable, whereas... As you say, Philip Quinn and uh, give me his first name, Johnny Rowan in the in the Paul Rowan, yeah. Paul Rowan. Um, they go in a lot harder. Um, they go in an awful, awful lot harder. And yeah, look, I, I think I'll just try and find the Philip Quinn line here. I, as, I, as I don't I think I don't think Philip was actually at the game, and I stand corrected if he weren't. And I I think Shane that it is important. I remember being at Dundalk um, and Carabeg. And Patrick McElhenney talked to me after the game about how he was suffocated by the heat. He didn't have a particularly good game. Um, but this is relevant because when you've journalists tweeting how hot it is sitting in their arses in front of a laptop and you've lads trying to run for 11 kilometres in two hours, it is important. Yep, yep, 100%. And, and look, you know, as you say, you've kind of flagged it even before I flagged it that there is maybe a, a little tete-a-tete maybe between between Philip and, and Stephen, and, and not just Philip, a, a few of the journalists, you know, there would be, I suppose you could draw a line down the middle and put some to the left and some to the right in terms of who has generally, whether results have been good or bad, who has generally tended to try and find the negative slant and who has generally tended to try and find the positive one. Um, Philip Quinn, in, it's just in his second paragraph here, says, for, for manager Stephen Kenny, his pre-match dig at those who went for him and his players over their Nations League's failings in 2020 came back to bite him, if only he'd kept Stum. Now, he, he's all but saying there that that was me, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Stephen Kenny was coming after me with those comments, and ha-ha, look what happened to Stephen. Yeah, you know? I, I should um, point out as well, when I'm saying journalists sitting on their arse, I mean the journalists who were actually at the game, if they're given out about the he's sitting on their arse, it's it's hot. I don't mean if Philip weren't at the game, that's not what I'm, I'm trying to say there, but Philip has obviously, he has, in fairness to him, he's been calling out Stephen Kenny a little bit when other journalists maybe have been a little bit softer on it, I think that's fair to say, and perhaps he feels, you know, performances like this do warrant the question, Shane. Well, he was given plenty of ammunition yesterday, Johnny. In mm. fairness, he was given plenty of ammunition yesterday. I mean, again, you, you know me. I, I do like to go to the numbers and all that just to try and get a sense of right. How does how do the numbers tally with my own opinion of the game? And we like obviously we had so much more possession and we had plenty of the ball and all of that kind of thing. But you go down. I mean, the, to me, the, key, the the kind of key number is in like we, we played three what what Optar what Y Scout would call um, incisive passes. I mean, we played what was it six hundred and something passes, and out of all of those passes, only three of them were were deemed to be incisive passes. So we spent so so much of the game kind of side to side, going kind of backwards, going out wide, um, and produced just very 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 little in terms of creativity and opening teams up but like that's is that a major surprise to anybody we're so so struggling in terms of trying to find that that number 10 that creative player um obviously since Wales and we probably didn't even get mass abuse out of Wales when we had when we did have him so I don't know what the solution is as to how we do better against teams like this I really I don't know Johnny like what how do we do better against teams just looking at it here just to give the three end of Stevens of Bene Callum Robinson they were the only three players they each completed one key pass a piece key pass been a pass that creates a half decent goal scoring chance um and that was and that was it like that that that's I, you know, I, that's not good enough. I, I, I think as well in terms of if we have if we're playing two wing backs like Enda Stevens and Seamus Coleman, who especially Coleman, his the pace is just gone. I mean, so you're not if you're playing a defensive team with two wing backs, we're not quick. Um, arguably, Ogbeni playing wing back last night would have been a better option, and maybe play a Robinson with uh, Obafemi and Parrott up front. But this is after the I, fact. I, I'm actually I'm actually with you a hundred percent on on that, and I, at the same time, I do understand where Stevens going. You know, do you want to put? Round pegs and square holes just for one. And Seamus is gone as an attacking force. I mean, he did. He did. There was one moment in the first half yes. where he did it. There was a fairly straightforward ball played to him, and he was rapidly out outsped by the whoever he was, the left back. And I was like, "Well, there you go." I mean, but well, what I but what I'm referring to is the redeployment of Benny. You know, Stephen mm. might have been thinking, "Well, hold on, now what's the point in sticking him in there for one game when, mm. or, or you know, one or two games when really I see him as 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 a nine or a ten for us." In terms of putting the best team on the field to win this actual game, knowing how they were going to set up, yeah, I would have absolutely went to a Ben right wing back. 100% I would have went to a Ben right wing back. Um, what else have we got, Niall? 
bring well, you just in. on, just well, just yeah. on the football. I mean, we 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 like. I mean, I competed at a number of Olympics that were extremely hot. I actually that, sorry, I meant to ask you that. Sorry, yeah. yes. So it is, it is, and it does affect your skill level there's no question in your decision making decision making we, 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 you know your technique can fall apart even if you're training at you know in really really hot weather you find your technique going over time big long sessions you really really depletes you so that it, it you know, and again we're talking about the the, the passing rate and the and, and the lack of accuracy you know, you have to attribute a portion of that to the to, to, to the heat. Remember the images of Steve Staunton, like, frantically pouring water over his head in US 94 because he was really struggling with the heat and there was this notion of the Irish red-haired guy, he's yeah. struggling. I, like, if, you, if you're watching that game like I did on TV last night, you don't really know, like, yeah. how difficult you're, it is you're, to play in that heat. Like. Well, once your core temperature reaches, well, well, well you know, gets jacked, it, it's very, very hard to bring it down. No matter how much water you throw on yourself, it's very, or drink, you know, it, it, that takes a while to come down mm. and it does affect your your ability to to perform skills it's just that that's the that's the way it is the only way is to acclimatize to it and spend some time in it and uh, clearly that wasn't an option for us this time yeah they they tried their best i think they trained a little uh, bit but like in fairness guard south is talking about the same in hungary and just just to bring up um, a couple of issues in that as well where we have um I get the impression uh, that Oliver Holt was like he just had a bad day yesterday because yeah, he's yeah. like England had a terrible night in the mail he's, he says but UEFA was even worse last week they locked out thousands this is in reference to the Champions League final last night they let in thousands who booed an anti-racism process what a farce and then on the other page Oliver Holt again it, yeah. a jewel of our summer has been stolen from us it's all part of the poisoning what we hold dear in sport which is this septic septic horrible Qatari World Cup Absolutely, I don't know how everybody else is feeling, but like you, you, you the 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 World Cup is synonymous with the summer, and uh, what Holt was saying was like you know you plan your your holidays, people go on holidays to the World Cup, you know you have your evening laid out. I'm gonna watch Hungary and Germany or whatever, in, like on Wednesday, and then I'm gonna. So it's a whole theme around around that that, that summer feeling of a World Cup, and we've kind of been robbed that mm. of that, and it's clearly. Clearly, where the Qatarians said that it was going to happen in the summer, it was clearly never going to be an option. And um, yeah, I, everybody, I'm sure, you know, it's, it's just not going to feel the same. Maybe we'll be better in November, December, but I don't, I don't, I don't feel. I think we have been robbed. And again, it's back to, and you'll see it right the way through, uh, Saudi money, and and you know, I, I know, um, sorry, David Walsh spoke about that. So again. It's, it seems like uh, the sport has been robbed from us from uh, a few, a uh, bunch of wealthy people. What did you make of it, Shane? Yeah, it, it's uh, it's heartbreaking for me that there's no World Cup this summer. I think it really, really is. Obviously, it is a summer thing, Shane, is it? It is. A, it is. It, it is. It is. It's synonymous it, with summer. It is. It is. And and look, when we come on to the hurling, maybe we'll talk a little bit about one or two of the nostalgic pieces. But I mean, you you know, nostalgia is everything, and and and. A World Cup in the summer, you know, it's what we're all used to. It's, it's those feelings that we're used to from 1990 and all that. You know, it, the idea of a winter one is just like uh, Ollie Holt says at the start of the second section, the decision felt like a bad joke then. It feels even worse now. I do remember thinking at the time, how is this going to work? Like, I don't I don't understand how this is, has been allowed. But now that you actually get there, you're kind of I'm now ten times more infuriated and ten times more sickened than I was when when the decision was actually made. And you know, with an earlier football and hurling championship as well, Johnny, what the hell are we all going to do in the month of August? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, we might have to do something that doesn't involve sport. Actually, God forbid. But uh, nah. there was um, there was a strange feeling if we talk about the um, hurling last night, and there was a strange feeling in the ground of. It just did not feel like a Leinster final, and maybe we'll talk to Tommy Walsh. Maybe it doesn't feel like that in the Munster final today. But the the timing of it last night—I mean, what are we? The fourth of June. As much as there's a feeling maybe of shadow boxing, but it, it did feel a bit strange last night as well, Shane. It did, Johnny, a hundred percent. And look, I'll 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 preempt, I suppose, what I'm going to say by saying I I was a club manager last year. Okay, so I I got to experience what it's like to be. A, a GA club manager last year and to me um it is fantastic for those who are involved in club hurling club Gaelic football um be it as in management or or as players to have a definite calendar and to have half a year to themselves and when I weigh up all the pros and all the cons 
I do think it's a good thing. Okay. I do think it's a good thing because I do think you have mm. got to be fair to the masses first and foremost. But 100% agree with your point. It was now look, the game didn't help. Obviously, Johnny, we'll come back to the game in a minute. The game didn't help. But yeah, you arrived in, and I was like, it was almost like there was five minutes to go to throw in, and I was like, have I got my timing wrong here? Yeah. Kind of. You know, I was looking down at my watch going, is this 4.30 throw in rather than mm. 4 o'clock throw in or what? I couldn't quite wrap my head around it. And that persisted for the whole game. And look, I saw one or two people making the, the argument on, on social media and stuff like that, you know, should have gone to a different venue. Um, you know, was the venue the problem? Is the time of year the problem? Was the standard of the game the problem? But, I mean, I went up there... In I, I won't say I expected an absolute cracker and so on, but I expected a hell of a lot more than what I got from the whole day. Um, I brought Connor with me, Johnny. It was it was Connor's first ever time going up to up to Croke Park, you know. And this is his I first feel experience like of Croker. A, his first first experience at Croker, and I feel like I sold him a pup to a certain mm-hmm. extent. You know what I mean? You're you're building up to him and building up to him as to to what this is going to be. And I was telling him, you know, there's going to be huge crowds walking down Jones's Road and all of this kind of crack. And uh, so actually, how did you how did you not think there were going to be a small crowd at this game? It was obvious. Like, I mean, what what you, yeah. you sold him an absolute pup here. Yeah, I did, I did. I, I just didn't think it through, I suppose. Again, nostalgia got the better of me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Not for the first time in your life. Uh, you're very welcome back. Uh, it's Johnny Ward here. Um, we're doing this Sunday Papers uh, review uh, with Nilo Tool and Shane Keegan. And uh, just to give you an update, um, if you are following uh, the Gaelic football today, Armagh 1-7, Tyrone 1-5, uh, two and a half minutes into the second half. Um, the athletic grounds, it looks really, really tight, but kind of intriguing game as well. And uh, we will keep you up to date uh, on matters there in the Talchin Cup at the moment. It's going well for uh, Westmead. They are beating Carlo by six points at the moment. But let's revert back to the hurling last night and... Um, it was weird, Niall. Everyone was there. Like nobody left early, even though the game was over, because they wanted to see what's happened with this famous handshake. I know. I just like it's either it's like it's like Johnny Johnny Depp and Amber Heard, isn't mm. it? Like who are you? Are you uh, Cody are you, like Co- that comparison. <laughs> Cody or Cody's or, or Amber Heard is he? Or yeah, I don't know what it knows? is, but I just yeah. I'm fascinated. But I'm I'm absolutely <laughs> gonna watch every encounter now that they they ever meet. It is. It's just it was fascinating, and Orti did a play, you know, did a, a a good job showing it. And uh, yeah, it was it was showing that kind of apprehension. Of, you know, he was going to move first, he was going to blink first. Mm. But um, yeah, and it, it, it's it's funny thing because it's it's something that we don't really look at in sport. It's the competition between player and manager, and uh, I'm sure Shefflin is saying, well, you know. You're pretty good, Brian, but you, you probably wouldn't have won much if I wasn't if I wasn't uh, if I wasn't captain. You know that mm. kind of way, and likewise and vice versa. I'd say uh, Cody saying, "Yeah, but it was me pulling the strings, uh, Henry." You know that kind of way. So I think that's a real. <laughs> I just love it. I'm I'm absolutely going to watch every game that they're involved in, uh, and it's a real it's a real interesting story. And and <laughs> watching Henry walk away, he was absolutely bullying yesterday. I don't know whether you oh. saw it when he walked back. Uh, he was he was livid. I mean, he he. I I think he's a he's 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 obviously clearly a really really brilliant leader, Henry. And I, I just, um, but he was he was seeding, and he was he, he, he is it's impossible for him to not to show his emotions, Henry, as well. And you could see that he was seeding, and it is going to be that play between who was the most dominant. And we're we're looking back into history now. Who was the most dominant person? within that big successful uh, period when Henry was playing and I guess this is that fight between which was the most intimate was it the captain or what was it well this is this kind of way. and I think that's interesting I love it I absolutely love it and I'm, I'm team Henry I, I, I have to say I did find it compelling as well Shane was there ever um, a game where you went into it like and we've all had these moments in life where you think you may meet someone that day or that night that you're just you know there's going to be an awkwardness there was there ever a game where you played against a head coach that you and Shane unlike Brian Cody I think is definitely universally popular Shane is like he's, he's, he's more or less now in fairness Shane, Shane's a good lad I'm not saying Brian Cody isn't but like he's rubbed people up a bit the wrong way on this one was there ever a game Shane where you were you were that bit apprehensive about that handshake after 
Um, no, I don't think there was, to be fair. Going back to Exford after I left to Exford was probably the only kind of hostile mm. situation I had. But because the man who took over as manager was previously my assistant manager, we were on good terms. It was more so what would the people around watching the incident, how would they react? But... There are people, Johnny, and we will we will kind of touch on the match maybe for a minute or two when we get to after we have a chat about this. But there are people out there. I'm completely with Niall on this. There are people out there who believe that this is you know been trumped up by the media and is a complete and utter non-story and shouldn't be talked about and is it been invented by all of us um, who are looking for something to talk about. Like that is absolute bull. This yeah. this is a compelling situation and it has been trumped up by one man and one man only and that's Brian Cody because of his absolute classless behaviour in both situations. Here we go. Uh, here we go. Arthur O'D will like this because it, you call it it's classless behaviour. Um, and Johnny, it, it's, it's like the, this, the man the man is the greatest hurling manager we have ever seen or I am highly, highly unlikely to ever see another one before I pass away so I'm not... Uh, and that, but but you have to remove that from what's happened over over the two games. The reason it became a story in the first place, the initial handshake was normal on Henry's behalf, if somewhat slightly cold. But had that handshake broke when it was supposed to break, we would not have a story. The only reason we have a story is because Brian held his hand, kept his hand, dr- practically dragged him back towards him, made a big deal out of it. Brian then had an opportunity to make the story go away yesterday by going down and shaking the man's hand and and saying, well played, hard luck at the final whistle. And he has inflated the story again by not doing that. And I have, where I can, I suppose, try and and align with my own experiences is my own experiences have taught me, Johnny, that 99% of the time, it is the winning manager who takes the first couple of steps towards the losing manager. It's just how it works. Like, you know, you're the one in a better, in a position of strength, you know, go and, and, and use that in the right way and, and, you know, say hard luck to the opposition manager. So, for you know, I'm, I'm not buying at those that are saying, well, Henry didn't move towards him either. Like, Michael Verney tweeted the sideline footage there in the last hour or two. I don't know if you saw it as the final whistle went. And yes, Henry stands. But I think um, Brian goes in and I think it's Martin Comfrey embraces first. But then he, he not only does he not walk in Henry's direction, he walks in the complete, complete opposite direction. And I think all he had to do was take two steps in Henry's direction. And I think you would have seen Henry absolutely then come to meet him. And instead he didn't. And we're all left. I'm the same as you. I'm sitting in the stand and I'm going, mother of God, Brian, will you go to him? Will you go to him? And you're watching and he didn't and he didn't and he didn't. And then as we all saw, it was Henry who decided, right, under whatever sort of, you know, I'm going to be the bigger man here. I don't know what his thought process was. I felt sorry for for Henry and the whole thing because he hasn't really done anything to stoke this up or to inflame this situation. Um, and he went, he shook the hand. I don't know why he was shaking the head away from it. I, like everybody, to be honest, I would love to know what the verbal exchange was. It might have been nothing. It might have been absolutely nothing. Maybe Henry came away from the incident, Johnny shaking his head because they had lost the game. Or I'd say he might have slightly felt aggrieved by the referee's performance. And maybe that's why he was shaking his head. Or maybe he was shaking his head because Brian said something. Or maybe he was shaking his head because he felt, why have I had to be the one yeah. to walk to him and shake his hand? Uh, it is it is like compelling as a photographer last night. You want that money shot. And that's why there was all this hysteria after the game. And, you know, we have the... Fortunately, the photographer isn't named here in the in the Times article, but it, it is a compelling, compelling photograph. You can clearly see Cody's, uh, yeah. sorry, Shefflin's left hand is clenching Cody in almost something of a, a show of strength in in defiance of the fact that they've lost the game. And Cody, the look on him there, Niall, I mean, it's just yeah. Brian Cody. He just, is just he he is just absolutely deadpan. He's not mm, you know deadpan. You know, kind of not a smile, not cracking a smile or anything like that. And I think. You know, as 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 a winning manager, you're almost there. This sounds terrible. It's probably the wrong word, but mm. almost to console the, the 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 other manager or show some solace that you know I've been there before and I know what it's like. And I think, and, and I, Niall, yeah, and Niall, I I also don't believe this kind of narrative crack. You know, the similar that that oh he only is the the manager that he is because of that ruthlessness like they're they're two separate things i can get it when people no. said it about roy Keane, you know you know roy Keane would have been the player he was if he hadn't got that edge to him and if he wasn't the kind of personality he was i can understand that because it actually physically affects his performance on the on the pitch brian cody uh, like i don't see how behaving in the manner he has done towards henry shefflin in the last couple of weeks 
has any correlation with the fact that he's one of the greatest managers of all time. Like he can be what he he is one of the greatest managers of all time, and but still have conducted himself in a yeah. in a suitable manner towards Henry mm. over the last on the last two yeah. occasions. Being an aggressive player or being a kind of a you know, key mark marquee player on on the pitch is completely different from being a coach. They're not the same, and as as a as a manager, uh, it's not. It's not in a lot of cases. It's not what you say. It's how you make the player feel, mm. and you need to be that 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 leader that that be able that maybe kick up the ass, but also uh, put your arm around them as well. And I, it, so so it, that does not play true. And, and again, it's 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 not that's not the behaviour. That's not the attitude that has made Bride Coney uh, Cody so successful. It's just not. And I I don't know what's going on um, with him, but I'd say it's that kind of. Um, maybe the fact that like Henry was such a big influence over that over over that team that that was winning all those All Irelands that maybe I don't know it, it's really know, it's, 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 it's really difficult it's really difficult to get, get my head around but I think Cody's really letting himself down and I'm sorry that's just it's just not mm-hmm. acceptable I don't think look I'd, I'd be fairly confident in saying that his issue here is that he just doesn't I, I'd say Brian firmly believes that fellas shouldn't be managing outside their own county you know obviously maybe that's he's, it he, maybe they, you know, say, he feels I, I, that he's I, betrayed I, the county or something like that I don't know and again he, I, I don't agree with that line of talk but if that's how he feels that's how he feels but you can have that can be how you feel but still behave in you know an appropriate yeah. manner <laughs> sorry now, if, by if, the way, Johnny, if that is if that is his belief it's it's very very convenient though considering that Brian Cody has been managing Kilkenny for the last 200 years so that means nobody can manage Kilkenny except yeah. Brian Cody obviously Henry's yeah. ambitious he wants to he wants to stay in the sport and he wants to kick on he wants to create another legacy for himself or whatever so he's he's entitled to coach whoever he wants um, and just uh, manage whoever he wants you want to make mention sense. A, yeah you want to mention a piece well by Nadine Darty player power will shine through um and this is in the uh, Sindo um and we obviously have um, Nicky Wall who's off to the AFL on the front and she's gotten a lot of um, Vicky Wall rather has gotten a lot of publicity this week in terms of her move to the AFL but um, this piece by uh, Nadine who you know yeah I, I, like, I love Nadine to bits she's uh, I, I see her I see her train she's part of part, part of uh, part of my crew and she's as she's as hard as a coffin nail and uh, and uh, yeah she writes a piece a, a really really brilliant piece about how uh about individuals need to stand up within that team, mm. with team, with that, in that team environment, it's a, it's, it's a great piece. It's about, it's about again. Um, you can have all due respect, Shane. You can have all the best managers in the world, but without these key marquee players stepping up at these unique, uh, special times to really, really uh, grab a game by the, by the cojones. Um, it's a great piece. I, 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 and I, again, I, it's great to see. That there's so much more writing about women's sport coming through. Uh, hopefully, that doesn't sound passionate. It's not meant to be. Uh, but I, it's it's great to see more and more articles. And uh, yeah, it's a great piece worth to, worth to read. And uh, yeah. No, Shane, we we did the the papers um, on 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 off the ball aim the other morning, and um, Vicky Wall's decision will say to she's she's gonna go or whatever. But it, it was the, the back page of one of the tabloids was. Vicky Wall has broken her silence about yada yada yada, and I was like, "How far female sport has come in this country?" That 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 was the line to start the article. That there was no coverage of this stuff like a few years ago. There was nothing, yeah, and yeah. now it's like, and if you see all the metrics are very good as well. People are interested, and for for in terms of where female sport is, in terms of how how much in its infancy it is, and how Same. empowering that Mead win was last year, I think it's great. Yeah, and and look. Regardless of whether it's a, a female journalist writing the piece or the fact that it's a, yeah. a, about a, a female sport, this is just a very interesting piece to read. Um, so it is. I thought it was very good. I don't know Nadine in, in the way Niall does, but I, I, there's a bit at the, a bit at the beginning and a bit at the end. Um, she yeah. says I place a high value on coaches and managers, but in my own experience on the pitch and on the sideline, the most influential factor of the success of the team is is its players. It is all about personal about the personnel available to the manager. So Niall has just touched on that, mm. but then. When you come to the end, yeah, she, 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 she brilliantly back a bit. bookends it. Yeah, <laughs> well, she she brilliantly bookends it by yeah, saying yeah. the greatest players aren't always the most skillful yeah. or athletic, but they are the ones born with an inherent competitive instinct that they use to positively influence their teammates in order to gain success. I think that's now that is. 
that is a that is that is a manager's dream, you know, leader within the dressing room. Absolutely no doubt whatsoever. Somebody who who not only is is a lead, is a leader, but just has that ability to influence those around them and drive those around them on to more. Um. So yeah, look, it's 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 a very those, very good those piece. people are very good both on the on the pitch, you know, really getting stuck in, but also very very good at language. They know how to mm. inspire people with language, and it could be a couple of words here, there, and everywhere, or you know, just but they're, they're extremely good at, at, and, at motivating people, and it's all about. And that. Johnny, ab- yeah. absolutely, and, and and Johnny, I know you were a bit bit flipped there when you say it sounds like Henry Shefflin, but you know, for everything I've just said there about Brian Cody, like we do need to come back to the fact that Kilkenny deservedly won the game yesterday. Brian Cody arguably pulled off another result where he had. I would argue technically inferior 15 players on the field to the opposition. Totally. Mm. Like how he keeps doing it is incredible. And, you know, <laughs> um, that very, very much does have to be pointed out. I, I, I didn't, I couldn't see Galway winning that game yesterday, but uh, I'd argue that it's almost the Cody factor is why they won it. You know? Over to Ardwaka and their man goalkeeper has just basically soloed up the field, gotten the ball, beautiful left-footed oh, point from 25, 30 yards out. This brings me on to the evolution of Gaelic football, Shane, which, um, according to Tommy Conway, the evolution of football is on a tedious road to nowhere. Um, I'm not entirely sh- sure I agree with all of this article, but I think there are some diamond lines in it where he says, um, setting down on the couch last Sunday for the double header from Salt Hill and Clonus, it wasn't long before we ended up being a little bit too settled by the action uh, unfolding in front of TV. In fact, Vascom V. Galway wasn't three minutes old when an all-too-familiar pattern of contemporary Gaelic football began to induce its soporific effect on this viewer. And he goes over and back, left to right, right to left, over and back. Roscommon passed the parcel, the Maroon Maginot line, which is always a great line. Anyone for a cup of tea and a custard cream? And he ends up the piece with, is there anything to be said for another mass? Now, you have to read all the lines in the middle. Um, and then, obviously, Joe Brawley, who's been given out like about games that were far better than uh, um, the Ulster final last week woeful shite but we'll take it anyway um, and this was I think one of the texts he got from a former teammate but he basically says yeah I didn't enjoy the game but you know it is what it is we won um, what did you make of these pieces Shane? Um, yeah I, I, I'll be honest with you I didn't get too deep into either of those ones so I didn't look by and large I agree with the overall sentiment it, it, do you enjoy Gaelic what... football? I enjoy not as not as often as I wish I would. I would tune in and like I would probably I don't know. Obviously, I was at the game yesterday, so I couldn't tune out. Yesterday was as poor a game as I've seen in a while now. If I was watching that on TV in hurling, I might have flicked away. But by and large, I'll sit through a whole game of hurling, regardless of whether it's good or whether it's bad. I'll give a game of football probably twenty minutes to show that it's it's a good game, if that makes sense. If it's not, I might flick around and come back to it. So I wouldn't be as invested. Um, when he does make well, his, sorry, sorry Shane he does make a good point as well now Tommy Connell in the piece about the atmosphere now yeah. the the atmosphere in a game is vital to me I, God knows I was at enough games behind closed doors and the atmosphere at Gaelic football games this is probably an exception today as yeah, our man go 1-12 really, 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 the atmosphere really cracking, can, it, it, w- when the ball is just going across the pitch it's just like it's, 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 yeah. it's like the chass um, outside a mass like it's yeah, dead yeah, yeah. and it's like it, it's, it's, a, it's a valid point he makes yeah people want to see you know, it, it, you want to see people getting stuck into each other. It's, it's, it becomes overly tactical mm. and people just switch off, you know, that kind of way. And you've been in games before, um, you know, and it just you just do switch off. If it becomes over, you you, you know, you, people are trying to, it's like a chess game, you know, that kind of way. It mm. should be, it should be impact. There should be people just smashing into each other, you know. And yeah, it's, it's yeah, it's, it's not good. Johnny, I'm I, I'm I'm now in a role as as I think you know. I'm now in a role where my my full time day job it involves me coaching Gaelic football fifty percent of the week. Mm. I'm I'm coaching hurling fifty percent of the week. Oh, I'm coaching Gaelic football fifty percent of the week. And from a coaching perspective, trying to trying to coach as young and all as a lot of them are that we're coaching, trying to coach fellas to be that little bit different, to be ambitious with the ball, to be direct, to be creative, to be thinkers. Um, is is what I think we all need to be trying to do around the country at the moment to try and you know to try and counteract the sterileness of a lot of what we're seeing. I mean, you're not, you know wouldn't be a million miles away from you there. I suppose Corrafin as a club side at their absolute best. Um, 
they are the ones to me that I would absolutely hold up as 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 to what we should be be trying to achieve. The stuff that the, the standard of football, the excitement, the level of football they produced. Obviously, Dublin at at inter county level, but they have you know a really really exceptional group of players. Corfin have done it with more, not to be insulting towards, but more mundane or more normal players. Um, and they've done it with style. And you just love to see more and more coaches kind of really going out there and and trying to trying to get that skill set into kids as early as they possibly can to try and keep the game as, as attractive as possible when they become fully formed adults and, and the inter-county stars that we're going to end up watching in, in another 10 or 15 years' time, you know? Just on, on that point, Shane, do you think, fundamentally, do you think we need a change of rules in Gaelic football, which is kind of what um, Joe Brawley got to in his piece as well, where he says... Again, I don't necessarily agree with this. He said, the rule the rule makers have refused to act other than a relevant tinkering. This is now the game. Um, now, Joe Joe has brought forward these ideas. I think he had this point where the, the, the ball had to be kicked over the 45-yard line and there were only a certain amount of players that could be and so on and so forth. So in fairness, Joe Brawley, he's actually put forward ideas to change this. Do you think fundamentally that we need, we need rule changes? Yeah, I think it would be no harm to look at them. I think it would be no harm to, to to tweak a couple of things here. I don't think they need to be absolutely wholesale, but if there are a couple of things that can be, as I say, tweaked, that can make the game a little bit more free-flowing and a little bit more uh, attack-minded, then why not? Why not? You know, why not play around with one or two things in in search of a formula that 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 makes the game a little bit more more attractive? You know, it is struggling at the moment. I think the most football diehards would say, "Well, look, the boys on the Sunday game are slating their own sport at the moment." So everybody is mm. kind of saying something something probably needs to happen at the moment. But I I do think it comes back more to the coaching and how we go about coaching. Our, our young footballers than it than than to rules. Briefly, have you one more piece before we go to the ads? No, I like I like the piece. I know uh, I know Shane, you you were, you were commenting on um on the wrong and Bernard Jackman's piece about about uh, about Raj. I mean, we're all fascinated with Raj anyway, and uh, could again, could he, apparently solved the Northern Protocol. Well, same he can do anything nowadays. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, I'm a Leinster f- supporter and a Liverpool supporter, so it's been very difficult for what me. I, did, I didn't read any newspapers last week, um, but I like, like again, he and he invokes this kind of. There was this uh, Mount Everest story about the, um, t- two two climbers that. Um, that were 300 meters from the top, and uh, and they, they retreated, and they kind of lived with them forever. And uh, again, he, he it, like with the, the, what Bernard is saying, you know, themes have themes, you know, that kind of way. And and, and I love that. And we when we were when I was competing um, in crew boats, we always had themes about how to act, and we had a kind of language about how to talk to each other. And uh, he he um, he writes about it really really well and uh, and again clearly he's he's a he's an excellent leader an excellent coach and uh, yeah I think we <laughs> I think we need him for the Ireland uh, for the Ireland job yeah just the, I suppose the quote that comes out of it um, and this is the Sindo piece yeah you, you took my I think you took my piece did you do did uh, some uh, my paper uh, maybe maybe I did take it actually. <laughs> yeah. the papers are all over the place I today. know yeah Ron O'Gara is a highly charismatic emotionally emotionally intelligent and has massive self belief. He's also a very kind person and um, obviously that's um, after the La Rochelle uh, victory last week. We've loads more to talk about after the break. If you are um, holding on for a return from the Tyrone forwards, five points down with ten minutes to go. Let's go to the ads. The Sunday Papers on Off The Ball. FBD Insurance knows this sound spells trouble for van drivers. But if you're an existing FBD customer, you'll get 15% off a new van insurance policy. It's how we're keeping you and your van on the road. Visit fbd.ie or contact your local branch. FBD Insurance. Support. It's what we do. Terms and conditions apply. 15% discount available on new commercial motor policies only when an existing FBD farm, business, car or home policy is in place. FBD Insurance Group Limited, trading as FBD Insurance, is regulated by the Central Bank of Ireland. Commercial motor insurance is underwritten by FBD Insurance PLC. Your mental health is important, and now it's easier than ever to find the supports and services closest to you. You can free phone the Your Mental Health Information Line at 1800 111 888 anytime. Our team will tell you which supports and services are near you, where they are located, and how you can access them. You can also visit yourmentalhealth.ie for more information on mental health. 
for you or for people you know. Yourmentalhealth.ie from the HSE. So you're finally thinking about booking that hotel break, but not sure where to go? Easy, go breaks.ie. Short family holiday, chill get together with friends. Go Breaks will find the best hotel for you from just 75 euro per night. Choose from hundreds of three and four star hotels across Ireland. Go explore, go experience with Go Breaks. T's and C's apply. Book your next adventure now at gobreaks.ie. Go Breaks. Obi Wan Kenobi now streaming. They're coming. Stay hidden. Exclusively on Disney Plus. Experience the six part original series. The key to hunting Jedi is patience. Where is he? A new original series, now streaming exclusively on Disney+. Plus. Subscription required, 18+. Plus. Terms and conditions apply. At Sherry Fitzgerald Lettings, we look after your property. At Sherry Fitzgerald Lettings, we'll look after you properly. With more than 80 dedicated lettings experts across the country, we have the expertise, the experience and the local knowledge. With a commitment to quality service, we ensure a better experience for tenants and safeguard your investment return. We look after your property. We look after you properly. Sherry Fitzgerald Lettings. Let our experience improve yours. Visit sherryfitzlettings.ie Dreaming of a perfect garden this summer? Make it happen with the Woody's Flash Sale. Cook up a storm with 25% off all Phoenix barbecues and pizza ovens. Unwind with 20% off all Rattan garden furniture. And spruce up the garden with 5 litre Ron Sale Fence Life 1 coat, 2 for 15 euro. Plus 20% off all Hyundai cordless garden power tools. Offers for a limited time only. Shop the way that suits you, in store, online or with Click and Collect. Woody's, we're all homemakers. T's and C's and exclusions apply. When it's time to choose a new path towards a world of more sustainable, responsible power with cars designed for the world around us, take that new path with the all-electric Volkswagen ID.4 and all-new ID.5, created and delivered net carbon neutral and with zero carbon driving emissions. Choose a new path with the all-electric ID.4 and the all-new ID.5. Search Volkswagen ID. Volkswagen. Migraine affects half a million people in Ireland. Sumatran Relief 50 milligram tablets containing Sumatriptan is now available over the counter from your pharmacist if you've been previously diagnosed with migraine. Unlike painkillers, Sumatriptan acts by having an effect on a specific receptor in the brain, relieving the intensity of migraine. Ask your pharmacist about Sumatran Relief. Always read the leaflet. Here's your chance to improve how people age in Ireland. We're recruiting people between the ages of 50 and 62 to take part in the Irish Longitudinal Study on Ageing. Help us to understand more about the lives of today's over 50s. Visit tilde.ie for more. On 106 to 108 FM. On the News Talk app, powered by Go Loud and Smart Speaker. This, this is News Talk. It's three o'clock, I'm Lindsay Dolan. Good afternoon. A Sunday Independent Ireland Thinks opinion poll shows a large majority of Irish people believe there's a financial crash coming. Ireland Thinks director Kevin Cunningham says two-thirds expect their financial position to worsen in the coming year. 70% said that they did believe that uh, there would be a recession in the next 12 months. Now that's obviously a very significant figure. It doesn't necessarily mean that there would be a recession, but obviously it suggests to some extent that within the population, perhaps they might decide to, uh, there might be a bit more belt tightening over the next couple of months and weeks to come. Government officials are considering giving smaller landlords tax breaks to stay in the rental market. That's according to a report by the Business Post with the review due to be published in the coming months. For smaller landlords to apply for the tax cut, they would have to reduce their rent below the average market rate. Dr Rory Hearn, Assistant Professor of Social Policy at Maynooth University, says the plan is lacking urgency. This proposal doesn't appear to, to come in, to be set to come in until the budget, which is not until October, which we could be talking about then next year before it's actually implemented. Um, I think that's too late in terms of a response. We're seeing the rental crisis as bad as ever. There is an issue with landlords, small landlords, leaving the market, selling up. 
Tui passengers are looking for answers again today after further Tui Airways flights were cancelled at Dublin Airport this morning. The 5.45 to Roos in Spain and the 5.55 to Lanzarote were both affected. Passengers were told they may be able to fly out tonight or even tomorrow. Yesterday, the airline cancelled flights from Dublin to Palma and Rhodes. Over 20,000 people are running in the Women's Mini Marathon in Dublin City Centre. It's the first time the 10-kilometre event has returned to the streets of the capital since 2019. A small group of women who've taken part in all 40 marathons were celebrated before the race started. Carol Ormond from Bray County Wicklow was among them. You know what, I, every year I think, I'll, that's the last, now I won't do it again. And then I say, no, I have to go another time. You know, it's, it's, good, it's good for you, it's good for your body and, and your mind. Garthi in County Westmeath are trying to locate a missing six-year-old boy, Michael O'Connell, who's four foot tall with black hair and blue eyes, has been missing from Mullingar since Friday. He's believed to be with adult relatives and may currently be in Northern Ireland. It's two minutes past three. News talk weather. Thanks to Ryanair. Before you ask, yes, we fly there. Over 200 destinations this summer. Continuing dull and cloudy with scattered showers, the odd sunny spell mostly in the north and west of the country. Highs of 14 to 18 degrees. Now you're up to date on News Talk. Off the ball. This is News Talk. Yeah, you're welcome back to the Sunday paper review with Shane Keegan and Niall O'Toole in studio. Uh, just over three minutes left in Armagh. It looks like Tyrone, the All Ireland champions, are on the way out of the All Ireland Championships. They're five points down. Um, it could be a, quite a serious injury for one of the players uh, just going off the pitch. The moment. We'll, we will update you, Aaron Kernan um, and uh, Jonathan Higgins, in due course. And we'll be talking to uh, Oshin and uh, obviously to Tommy Walsh as well about the Monster final, which is upcoming. And uh, in the uh, Talchon Cup there's a bit of a humdigger between Carlo and Westmead 2-7 to 113 at the moment Westmead leading by 3 points 2-7 to 113 uh, at the moment um, and just uh, Conor Macken is the injured player we will keep you up to date on uh, the progress of, of Conor Macken who has uh, just been carried off the pitch there and uh, round of applause from both sets of fans um, just going back to the rugby yesterday Niall you were talking about the, the, the I guess the non-event that was the Leinster game you were at and you get a lot of these in rugby yeah, I just, I just, this quarter final, it's just no depth. I mean, they were, they were, I mean, Leinster were poor in the first half and, and came out all guns blazing in the second half, but I think it was 76 14 or something mm-hmm. like that. And at that stage in a quarter final game, you think they would be much, much, much closer. And it was just really, I mean, a massive Leinster fan. Um, but I would have thought that just at that late stage, we'd have a better game. And it just was not uh, like there was no there was no contest. I don't know what Glasgow and Glasgow were particularly poor. Leinster were weren't good in the first half, and came out and smashed them in the second half. But at the same time, you you would have thought there would be more depth in that championship, and it's just not. I don't see. Yeah, and just just get back to football. Six points now in Geezer's uh, role as our man manager. It certainly looks like going on for a little bit more. Just a few other articles to get through. We are here until uh, with the lads until. Around about uh, half past uh, three, so we have a bit more to get through. Uh, we, I guess we should go to the back page, actually, of the Sindo and Lester Piggis. Um, yeah. And you were speaking about when you were brought up, like the role that Lester had, and it's a piece. Um, it's a, it's kind of a point that's mentioned a lot by Eamon Sweeney, the ultimate master of his art. We get to that, but your own memories of Lester. Yeah, it's funny because like I, I was born in the seventies, and like we always thought he was Irish. Mm. I mean, that was the thing. Everybody just thought he was Irish. We just assumed that he was Irish and of course he's not. Uh, and it was like, like if you're running for a bus or you did anything quickly, who do you think you are? Lester Pickett. You know, that kind of way. It was like, it was, he was a synonymous with speed. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it just, it's one of those things. I think we kind of owned him. It was very little success back in the 70s mm. and 80s, I guess. So we, it was ex- outside of the racing for, for Ireland. And I think we kind of owned him or took him as one of ours, and yeah, it's, it's a. I, yeah, I hear he was a very, very difficult. I know you you'd met him, Johnny, a few times, but I hear he was a particularly difficult character. He used to say that it wasn't because he was trying to lose weight. He was, he was quite a tall jockey. He mm. wasn't trying to lose weight all the time, but as somebody who tried was watching their weight all the time, you know, being underweight makes you grumpy, and I'm sure that's why he was a bit grumpy. I think, think. I think Tony McCoy can relate to that as well. Um, I mean, if you're, God knows, I mean. 
If you're in ketosis you, the whole time, the, and just, well, yeah, there's one thing yeah, being yeah. hangry, but there's another thing being effectively emaciated and un, being unable to eat at all nearly every day to yeah, the extent yeah. that you would. And um, it's a lovely piece by Eamon Sweeney, who who obviously does reflect on on Leicester. And I thought there was a good line here. Um, another great Steve Donahue had been criticised for the same thing as long ago as the 1920s which is effectively jockeying off so replacing another jockey yet it seemed to epitomise Piggott's extreme competitiveness he had the killer instinct and the raw desire observed the great American uh, jockey Steve Cotton um, desire is probably the most important thing it doesn't necessarily make you happy Shane but it makes you successful but no a huge amount about him Johnny but it seems like he'd get on well enough with Brian Cody doesn't it <laughs> 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 Why do you say that? <laughs> I'd say Brian, 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 Brian Cody, Lester Pickett, and Alex Ferguson. Now the three never on the table. They get on very, 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 very well. I reckon. Um, yeah, look, I just had a, a bit of a, a glance over to say it's it's it wouldn't be a far from an area of expertise for me, but but even longevity wise, I, I just see there that like won the 1954 Derby at the age of 18, and Rodley was what age, Johnny? 52. Well, he came, yeah, he came back on Royal Academy um, when he was was he fifty two or fifty two? Yeah, yeah. Right. he'd retired, and uh, you know, the, in fairness, racing doesn't have many of these moments anymore. I think it's kind of it's a sport that's. Uh, I guess some people think it's it's dominated by the rich and so on, but you know, when you get moments like Leicester winning, he was fifty two. Um, Already retired when he when he got out. The game seemed up. Two years later, he returned. Um, he was 54, yeah. O'Brien was 72. That's Vincent O'Brien. And nearing retirement. But wanted his old comrade to ride Royal Academy in the Breeders' Cup Mile in New York. Um, and he ended up getting up on the line at the age of 54. But the mad thing about this Nile was he... And, and there are people around who will tell you that they were there. He went to the Curra the previous uh, weekend just to put his... Kind of get his eye in. Yeah, yeah. He had four rides and they all won. They all won, yeah. Do you know I mean? It's like, just incredible. It's, the, yeah, and, and Leicester... I mean, I was at Bellustown last year, Shane, when Frankie de Tori was there. And... Like Frankie's Frankie's an odd character in some respects because like he has this persona. Do you remember in Father Ted where um the, the Eurovision episode where your man was totally different in front of the camera? And oh, yeah, like yeah. He, you could barely decipher what he was saying. I'm not saying Frankie Dettori was like that, but when you Fra- talk to Frankie Dettori like off camera and off air, he's he's not a particularly warm person at all. He's yeah. I think he's just fed up of, of all the hype. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when the camera comes on, he's like that. Yeah, yeah. And Frankie Dettori at Bellistown that day, there was everyone was just gravitating towards him and I was like, I can I can see why you don't live a normal life anymore. Yeah, yeah. I think that is that I mean Lester don't don't think he cared. You know, he seemed to have this like I don't care, you know, that mm. kind of way. He's a bit of a Roy Keane kind of thing, you know that kind of way about him. And he just didn't care and he was a uh, but a phenomenal yeah, again, we, 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 he, growing up in the 70s and 80s, he was, for all and purpose, Irish, Irish and we kind of, when there was nothing else happening, we, we kind of gravitated towards him and say mm. he's one of ours and we, we, we are a successful sporting nation, which clearly we weren't. So mm. he gave us that little bit of hope to hang on to back in, the, back in those great days, I think. So, um, yeah, but a phenomenal... A phenomenal. Uh, and was it many years did he go away? Was he a couple of wait years in jail for tax or something? I think he did a year. Yeah, yeah. Um, he did a year. I mean, Lester was very. He was supposed to be tight. He was definitely tight. I mean, there is, I've I've told the story a few times, but like <laughs> Willie Carson, he asked him for the lend of a tenner, and Willie Carson is like, "Oh, jeez, okay, okay, I'll go on, sure, I'll give you the yeah. tenner." Two weeks later, no sign of the tenner. Yeah, He's yeah. like, "Lester, sir, what's like, the any any sign of the tenner?" And Lester's like, "I haven't, I haven't even spent it yet." <laughs> like I remember, going up, I remember going up to him in the press room. He came into the car, the car press room, Shane, and it was the old car press room. And you were kind of like you'd be there, like tapping away and going through the motions. And Lester would just slink in, and I think he was partially deaf in one ear. So you kind of, if you, you have to talk to him, he'd be kind of very polite. But he'd slink in, and uh, he was there with uh, like a couple of people. And Tracy was there, and I went over to him, and I, I got the the phone camera out, and Tracy was Tracy's daughter was there, and I said, Lester, Lester. Would you mind taking a photo of me and Tracy, right? And uh, he really got the joke. He was like, he was yeah, dying yeah. laughing, and uh, he just said this lovely air about him. He was kind of getting on in life at that stage. Yeah, but yeah. Um, I don't know, Shane. Do, do you? Uh, is there ever been like a, a sporting person you've met where you've kind of been just in awe? Um, Brian Cody. Yeah, I, I was I was up at uh, I was up Brian Cody. I was up. <laughs> I was up at an, 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 an. You want to come on the show and defend your honour? I think oh, you've I'm done that going. over the last twenty five years. Uh, eh? no, Sorry, I was yeah. I was up up at the League of Ireland do one of the season launches. I think yeah. uh, Johnny and um, 
got into the lift to come down from it and Paul McGrath had been the special oh. guest at it and as we were coming down in the lift we just got chatting and it became apparent that Paul was going to order a taxi um, to get he was heading out to Malahide he was going to order a taxi to go to go head out to Malahide so needless to say <laughs> needless to say I jumped at that opportunity and offered Paul I said Jesus don't get a taxi jump into the car I time in my hands Paul I'll, I'll drop you out um and yeah that that would probably rank up there as the the top encounter i had paul in the car for the next half an hour dropping him out to out to malahide and uh, yeah that was a truly feeling to being in the presence of greatness what yeah. was he like ah uh, absolute gentleman absolute gentleman yeah couldn't have couldn't have been sounder chatting away about about this that and and, and absolutely everything there was lovely lovely images of roy Keane as I think he was at a Cove Ramblers game there a few weeks ago on the same night. Yeah, Paul McGrath that. was in Tala, and there were photos of Paul McGrath. And I was talking to a couple of people afterwards. Uh, Paul McGrath stayed stayed around till a quarter to eleven, I think, signed autographs. And Stephen Bradley said afterwards, came into the dress room afterwards to the Shamrock Rovers players, and um, yeah, just an absolute legend. And I, I think the thing with Paul McGrath was that because of his complex background, we even warmed to him more because I think as the Irish, we ourselves felt downtrodden. Yeah. I think he is that he's everybody kind of have as. as we knew how, what a phenomenal player he was for a start, and we've not. Everybody knows his, his his troubles have been well documented, and we. I think we just, you know, everybody clearly loves him, mm. and and uh, again, a very very shy, very very has, has struggled, I guess, with his shyness as well. It's very very open about mm. that. Um, obviously he had he had some addiction problems as well. So I think everybody loves him, and um, he's just he's he's one of those kind of iconic. Iconic figures in 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 sport, and I think everybody. Uh, and he, he he's a. He, it's very very clear that he's a super super kind person and a mm. and a good person. It's very very clear in everything he does. And nobody has ever said a bad word about <laughs> about Paul. It just doesn't exist, you know. Yeah, and what what a footballer as well. And uh, yeah, we, a couple of minutes to go in the game. Um, just it has been delayed due to injury. And um, yeah, if you're a Tyrone fan, you're worried. We'll get you an update soon on the on the full time whistle. Shane, any other articles uh, take your eye today across the papers? Um, obviously a lot of reflection on uh, Armenia debate about the, the future of football Oliver Holt's piece as, as well you you, uh, you had spoken about and um, yeah some yeah the two the two for me Johnny I, um, I would pr- probably the second in terms of ones I enjoyed the most was probably the Bernard Jackman piece that Niall has, mm. has referred to um, yeah, I also see that that uh, which one of the papers one of them referred to it was David Walsh actually just referred back on the back page to the O'Gara piece in the Examiner on Friday. I mean, anybody who hasn't read the O'Gara piece in Friday's Examiner, go and find it online. It's it's probably I think near enough the best piece best piece I've read all year um, from a sporting perspective. Talk about taking inside the inner sanctum. If we had. If we had a coach in hurling and soccer, and if we had our top coach in hurling, soccer, and Gaelic football, and all these different sports, um, writing pieces as brilliant and as open as Ogaris was um, about the, the the final win, we would all learn so much. We would all we would be infinitely better as a country of coaches. I'll tell you that. Um, so we would. He is just top top class. But for me, without a doubt, the most enjoyable piece for me from from today was was Dennis Walsh um, sitting down with Shawnee McMahon and and Gary Kirby. Uh, obviously, Claire and, and Limerick head into a, a monster final today, which I am hightailing it as soon as we finish here. Um, and so what he did was there was a I suppose a trilogy of games, two two back to back final monster so finals. Much, yeah, yeah. Um, in the mid '90s, followed by a semi-final, um, and there were, you know, the, the 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 personnel within those games chopped and changed a little bit, but the one duel that remained constant throughout those three games was Shawnee McMahon centre back, Gary Kirby centre forward. They marked each other throughout all three games, this and the piece, the piece saying, yeah. ah, it's it's brilliant, Johnny. It's just dripping with antidotes, and again, I know I've used the word already, but nostalgia, like. I, uh, Johnny, you're similar to me. Niall, uh, amazingly, is Johnny somehow seems to be older than us, which doesn't seem quite right. But however, uh, yeah, Farrell not doesn't seem quite right. Anyway, but as much as much and all as I'm enjoying forty and life going well, I don't care. Your mid-teens, everything was better. Everything was everything at its was best when you were in your mid-teens. Hurling was better. Football, soccer was better. The weather was better. Like the crack with your friends was better. Everything was better. And and I was in my mid-teens when these three games were taking place. 
they still firmly, firmly, firmly stick in my mind. Obviously, the most famous incident of the, across the three games was was Kieran Carey's winning point in 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 the third one, um, which is brilliantly told from Shawnee McMahon's perspective towards the end of this piece. But there's just, I mean, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight pieces. Um, from it highlighted so it's hard to know where to start I suppose just I, I will just give one or two um, Shawnee McMahon says of the first encounter where he got fleeced by Gary Kirby in the first half to such an extent that they took him off him and moved him on to Mike Galligan only for Mike Galligan to fleece him even more um, Shawnee says I wasn't physically strong enough and I wasn't fast enough and I wasn't aggressive enough uh, at that level it's kill or be killed I'm not talking about dirt but you do what you have to do or else you're going to be blown away that's what happened to me with Galligan in particular. I got an awful scalding. Limerick walked the game. I was lucky to play for Clare again. And that's a big statement Jesus. from a fellow who went on to be one of the best. Ever. In fact, he was harder the year 12 months later. <laughs> but 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 Galligan, a combination of Galligan and, and Kirby put all hurling out of his head that day. But it just, Johnny, it seems like an absolute different world. Like the Limerick players were still were travelling to Munster finals, in their, uh, travelling to matches in cars. They weren't going in buses. And I know 25 years have passed since then, but like there's just so many different and and no, it's in it. Like as you can imagine, now some of the strokes that Sherlock Nan was pulling as as manager, um, Shawnee McMahon had broke his collarbone heading into the second game, um, and Jer was <laughs> Jer was doing everything he can to convince Shawnee that he would be all right. He sent him up to um, he sent him up to Doctor Con Murphy in Cork, and uh, I went into Con and I did about four press ups. I don't think it would have been possible for me to complete a fifth one. He then kind of brushed off me. And then he said, you're bang on for Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> you can imagine how the role that up now was after playing in, in, in that one. I, um, I got a call before. That's for sure. Absolute and then on the, Friday, on, on the Friday night, Claire trained behind closed doors, finishing with a short game of backs and forwards. Every puck out was landed on McMahon and PJ O'Connell, his marker. I was eating a bit of food with PJ afterwards. And he said to me, you know, I was told to go nowhere near you tonight. <laughs> I, I, so it's... The, the, see, the thing is, right, for the majority of its existence, sport has been a part-time pursuit where lads and lassies worked and then they played in the evening. And professionalism, if you look at... I would tell anyone who's any interest in sport to look at Where's Your Pride, the RT documentary on Ireland's Triple Crown wins in the early 80s when the country was impoverished and these lads like were like basically part-time. And like I remember there, there was in, in 1985, mm -hmm. the, the Ireland-England game was called off because uh, Lansdowne was snowed out and Carr, the, I think he was a fullback from from um, the north he goes um, yeah we were we were, we were were devastated but Mick Doyle he put us through the toughest session I think in my whole time for Ireland we went to Donny and Esbeth for the day right <laughs> so it was, this was a different era and like Brian Clough had like the Nottingham Forest yeah, players yeah. before cup finals they'd be going out the night before the and the, the, the time that Shane talks about which was when we were 15 isn't that long ago this is a completely different era Shane it doesn't exist it's it's just mad. It is absolutely mad that it have gone can kind of gone that far. And yeah, look, it 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 did like hurling. What we're going to see later today, and there's you know there's a couple of good pieces around how the game will go later today. Dighton and talking about you know how will Limerick try and stop Tony Kelly. And today's game is going to be fascinating. What what Limerick do with Tony Kelly? Uh, how they try and use Kyle Hayes? There's just fascinating stuff, right? But back then, it wasn't as tactical. It wasn't maybe as intriguing from that perspective. But it was better. And I love and, and I love tactics. <laughs> I'm obsessed yeah. with tactics and all that. And yet this was better. This was just raw and it it was better. Again, he, he says at one stage in it, uh talk about stating the obvious. He says of of the the, the I suppose the uh, how they got the relationship between the two. Look at look on back on looking back on it, if truth be told, sure we probably didn't like each other. <laughs> I mean, talk, talk about staying the obvious. They were absolutely hatcheting each other. Like. Do you know, it, 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 Shane touched on a point there, though, I think, um, now that, like, it, nostalgia is something that corrupts your mind in some respects because you have this false idea of the past that is actually wrong and if I remember like being at Crow Park when Galway beat me in 2001 and like it was such a great day watched it back there a few years ago got my brother the DVD for Christmas just the football was so poor like and it was just that was my memory of it but when you were a kid and those endless possibilities of life when you were 15 I don't know what you were you going to where, where, where were you at when you were 15 funny yeah well I was I was well rowing I was I was, was my life probably looked great yeah, did you well, I mean, if you look like that, 52. <laughs> yeah. I looked about 
five when I was fifty. When yeah. I was fifty, no, <laughs> no, but it's, it is like that. I mean, uh, like. Well, like I'm, I'm obsessed by rowing. Clearly, I'm mean, like I was like a full time rower, literally from the time I was sixteen, almost. You know, mm. but um, but back to that nostalgia when when it was the '88 Olympics in 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 Seoul, and I still watch videos from that. And Seoul was like, like, like now people travel all over the world, but Seoul back then so was exotic, the like, other side of the yeah. world. It was like the James Bond movie, you know, that kind of way. And I still watch the videos. And the rowing is pretty, it's pretty crappy. Uh, in comparison to what what people are are doing now, and the lightweights and are, are are moving much faster than the heavyweights back then. Um, none of wow. these people, yeah. So I mean, the the sport has moved on, but it just looks, you know, because it's it, back to that nostalgia piece. You can't help but tapping into how exciting that was watching the Olympic Games in 1988, and, and you had you had Ben Johnson and all that stuff. But it was it was just amazing to watch, and it was again the other side of the moon, really. Uh, um, so and I still watch those even though the wrong is terrible uh, I still watch those because it g- gives me that sense of nostalgia did you read the piece um, it's in the back page of the Times and obviously it's um, do we have I have the Times today obviously this issue has been mentioned a lot I think Adrian Barry's uh, take on um, the whole McDougal situation on Friday and OTBM I think more or less sums up where I'm at on this but even though I applaud sports people Shane who take principled stances I can't bring myself to condemn Johnson Westwood and Garcia for taking the Saudi cash um, you know you were I suppose you were involved at a time when Galway United could have been taken over by Saudi investors I, I actually voted for, for, for that um, now we were told it wasn't the Saudi government but it's an interest in sports washing and all of this and what the golfers are doing what do you make of it? Um, I probably I could be a hell of a lot more principled than I am, mm. Johnny, mm. But about it all. To be honest with you, I could be a hell of a lot more principled than I am about it all. Um, yeah, I, I, I suppose I would look at not quite success at any cost, but um, yeah, I, like again, like if we're specifically looking at the golfers, like to me, there's. There's there's a big difference between an opportunity to make money as opposed to an opportunity to be struggling for money. Yeah. Okay, to me, yeah, you have to take that opportunity to make the money, and maybe you have to, you know, cut back in your principles a little bit, or 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 maybe you know soften them a little bit. But that's different than there's an opportunity to make loads and loads of money versus an opportunity to make loads and loads and loads and loads of money, if that makes sense, mm. um, which is obviously the case here with, with the golfers. I don't know. Do they, you know, do they need to, do they need to jump on board here? No, they they, clearly they don't. They don't. They're not yeah. on the bread line here. They're absolutely not on the bread line. And the same goes for racing. You do not need to send horses out to 20 million. A ridiculously, um, you know, wealthy Saudi cup for twenty million dollars or whatever it is. Money that's basically come from the Saudi government. You know, let's let's not beat about the bush here. And sorry, Niall, you do not need to be a golfer um that's been paid for by the Saudi Review. And like Graham McDougall saying, you know, I did it to effectively and I'm paraphrasing, I did it to feed my family. No, you didn't. No. You did it to <laughs> enrich yourself further um uh, thanks to a horrible, horrible regime. Yeah, it is a horrible regime and it's the same with Saudi Saudi Arabia, China as well. It's the same thing. I mean you'll see a lot of people um you know, you know, in uproar about loads of things. Like a lot, a lot of the, you know, the American basketball players in uproar about lots of different things. But they still, they still, um, they still take uh, all the Chinese money mm. again and again. The golfers, all the Saudi money. Yeah, it, it, it's something that doesn't really sit sit well with me. I like I, I did my sport. You know, we 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 trained. You know, thirty five hours a week for nothing. Um, and it just doesn't sit well with me. I, I, it's there's a huge amount of hypocrisy in about these because a lot of these athletes they, they virtue signaling all of the time. Mm-hmm. You know, they're, they're on to every social media cause that is out there, and they're they're hashtagging everything. Um, and I don't think it really sits down. There's, there, there's it, 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 it's a huge amount of hypocrisy about how they act and how they you know basically legitimise some of these regimes around the world. And uh, yeah, it doesn't. It just. It just does not sit well with me. Okay, take the money, but please don't virtue signal about other stuff 
yeah, on, on, on social media, whatever those other causes are. Um, so so that's my that's my Johnny, that's my I, thought. We have we la- we Johnny, actually I, we, we actually have to I, wrap, Shane. But um, well, well, yeah, well. sorry, I I will uh, just to thank both of you for coming in, and we've had a great chat about um this or that, and uh, hopefully see you soon, Shane. Um, maybe at a hurling game. Great to see you as well. And I'll I'll take you up on that offer of a uh, little bit of Ron. I okay, will. Okay, we'll take some video and we we, we yeah. Well, I'm not sure about that. Let's go to the ads. <laughs> Off the ball on News Talk. Future proof. What is life? It is.